So good evening, everyone, and welcome to the virtual chapter for October 2020. Uh, we've got a really special program for you tonight. Our special guest, Sarah Carson, is going to be with us in a little while talking about a magnificent technique called the CIA technique. Uh, or is it the CTA? No, it's the CIA technique. And <laughs> I'm really looking forward to that. And um, uh, we've got a, a little feature for you and, of course, some announcements to kick it off. Uh, before we do start, I just want to let you know, if you're a member of IAC and IMDHA or any other friendly hypnosis organization, uh, they will give you CEUs for spending your time with us. So if you spend an hour and a half time, uh, with us here this evening, you can get an hour and a half worth of uh, continuing education units. Uh, if you're an IAC or IMDHA, just log on to their website with your user ID. Some people I've discovered don't even know that they have a user ID. Uh, if that's the case with you, you might want to uh, give them a call at the office because uh, there's some some cool things that you can do with that. But uh, just log in and say I uh, I spent uh, an hour and a half with uh, with Michael and Karen and Sarah and I think that I ought to be compensated for it in some way, and uh, you know, and then they'll take care of you there. That works um, whether you're live or you're watching the recording. So gather your CEUs. Yeah, and 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 if and if you're here live and then you watch the recording, I'll bet you could probably even get three hours worth. I'm not sure, but I think that that might be true. Double um, your pleasure, double your points. Yeah. So we got all kinds of stuff to talk to you about in terms of uh, just some quick announcements. I, I just want to flash back for a minute because since the last time that we were here, uh, we had the Galaxy of the Stars. It was uh, two days. We uh, we filled the place. It was lovely. We had about uh, 80 people online uh, for, for the whole two days, four great presentations, and uh, it went swimmingly. If any of you were there, uh, you'll be getting a recording of the of the whole program on a flash drive, and that's actually going to be mailed out sometime this week. So, uh, um, so how about that? We're we're already uh, the recording is already done and on the on the way to you guys in the next week. Um, and uh, Karen, what's happening in your world? Well, in my world, I am up to here, honestly, literally, with Mid America Hypnosis Conference because this year it is the Mid America Virtual Hypnosis Conference, and it starts Friday. So <laughs> yes, we're winding down. I'm on the board of Mid-America and we are winding down all of the um, last minute touches. It'll be a fantastic three-day event. I'm going to take Sarah Carson's going to be there. Michael Watson is going to be our keynote speaker. Janet Rapala will be doing hypno massage. Oh my gosh, it's going to be good. Have a lot of interesting and very cool things going on. We have people from all over the world. Rob de Groof is joining us from Belgium. Uh, Kaz Riley from uh, the UK. We've just got people from all over the country still. We can still do it because we went virtual. I mean, these speakers would have been there in person, but we went virtual and everybody can still be there and we can all still come together and we can have a great time. And it starts Friday, Saturday and Sunday. It's a low price for this one because we went virtual. We thought we would kick it off at a low price. And if you're interested in joining us for the three days, you can go to mid-americaconference.com. Yeah, you don't have to spell out hyphen, but you do have to put the hyphen in. So mid-americaconference.com. You can get the entire uh, look at everything. You know, we've got some extra little things that are going on that aren't even mentioned on the schedule on the web website. People who participate will get this special information. We've got a hus hospitality suite that will have some cool things like um, a palm reading party. We're going to do magic tricks and card tricks and mentalism. Michael is going to do his Tibetan star wonder process. Uh, there'll be, oh, just all, hypno tarot reading. So it'll be a very cool thing. Jess Marion's going to be there. Jason Lynette, Dan Candell, Richard Nongard. We, you know, a huge list of great speakers. So we'd love for you to join us. We're doing this because I act and IMDHA set such a great example and taught us how to do it. And we said, hey, let's copy from the best. So we're replicating I act IMDHA and thanks to Linda and uh, Robert and Michael. <laughs> thanks to Linda and Robert, because I called him and said, do you think we can really do this? And thanks to Michael, because he's held my hand all the way through this and answered my panicked emails and texts so that we're getting this off the ground. So it starts the 16th. Do join us, mid hypnosiscom and you can join us from the comfort of your home for the virtual conference. Excellent. I can hardly contain myself. 
And, 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 and by the way, uh, yeah, that, that's always one of my favorite conferences. I've got to tell you, the thing I, I'm missing a little bit is that Chicago is home for me. Uh, and so it's my one time of year to go home. And uh, this year I'm not going home. Uh, but my mother is quarantined in a uh, assisted living center there anyway. So I can't get in to see her if I were there. So I guess I'll see her virtually. Maybe the day after the conference, I will have a whole tour of Chicago online. Uh, <laughs> do what I've always done. So uh, I, I also want to tell you just one last thing I want to announce is um, the uh, October 22nd, 29th, and November 5th, uh, I'm going to be running the virtual hypnosis class uh, online. And uh, in fact, I think uh, uh, somebody here, I think Marnie is, is Marnie is registered for it, yeah. Uh, and uh, I, I've been doing this for about three years and I kind of stopped doing it when COVID came along because it seemed as though everybody had figured it out. But I'm finding out that that's not quite true and you've got some questions and stuff. So you'll get really comfortable and familiar with uh, how to work on Zoom with clients, uh, some things about how you need to make adjustments to the way that you practice, as well as some of the technical things about running the software and all that. Three nights, uh, an hour and a half each evening. That's three Tuesday, uh, Thursday evenings rather, and uh, only 65 bucks for the whole deal. So, uh, uh, so join us if you can. And the way to do that uh, is to, uh, you can, well, if you want to, you can go to my website, which is www.phoenix-services.org. <laughs> I have that in common with Mid-America. Uh, <laughs> Phoenix-services.org. And right there on the front page, you'll see everything to, to lead you to the right place so that you can uh, sign up for this one. So please do. Um, anything else on your announcements list, Karen? Or I do not have anything else on the announcements list. Okay. Well, I do have one little thing that I'd like to, you know, we, we, we've sort of gotten into this habit now of introducing a couple topics in the course of an evening. And um, what I've noticed is it's, for example, we were just sitting here a minute ago and Karen Hand was telling us all about the Mid-America Conference. And I said, you probably heard me say so, I just can hardly contain myself. I said, I can't contain myself. I wonder these days uh, in the world that we live in and all of the craziness that's going on around us um, and, and, and uh, a lot of tension in our world, I think every one of us has found sometimes from time to time when uh, I can't contain myself seems to be, uh, it seems to be the, right, uh, the right phrase. And what I really mean by that is just this, this idea of being able to um, to, to manage your responses to things that trigger you because there are triggers <laughs> everywhere, right? And, and, and one of the things that I remembered uh, recently was an old, uh, an old technique from neurolinguistic programming that's uh, the responding to criticism technique. And in the responding to criticism technique, basically NLP just, you know, it's, it's really sort of a practical thing. That is, if somebody, if somebody says something to you that is critical and you take it the wrong way, you know, if you're offended by it or, or and, and, and you react and respond to it, it's because you, you don't take any time to really process it. It's just this kind of knee-jerk response, right? So all that you really need to do to be able to, to build into, uh, uh, to build into that so that it works differently is that when you sense criticism coming towards you is to do, is to head for the hills. <laughs> and what I mean by that is to do the oldest trick in the hypnotic toolbook that there is, and that is to dissociate. When I talk to people in classes about doing this, you know, we, we sit to do exercises and somebody will level a criticism at you. And I, and I tell my students, when, when, as soon as that happens, get up and get out of your chair for a minute, <laughs> you know, and from out here, I know you can't see me there, and from out here, evaluate the criticism that you've just heard and decide is, is you know, I'm, I'm free of my feelings for a moment and I'm just looking and I can decide, is this criticism of any use to me or not? Uh, what do I want to do with this? How do I want to respond to this? Now I can do it in a nanosecond, bear, bear in mind, because I think as soon as you get the dissociation, then you can do all kinds of great things. The, the, the problem is that we don't function very well when we're not dissociated for that moment because we're just reacting emotionally. So you get out there and you evaluate the criticism and you might, you might discover as you hear it that what, what you've just been told um, is really important. So you reassociate and you say to the person, gosh, thanks for that. I, you know, I really hadn't thought about it that way. By the way, you don't want to lose the opportunity that good criticism can offer you. God forbid, you know, this, this, is, this is how we get good is by paying attention to how the world responds to us, right? So 
so come if it's good criticism, you come back and you say, thank you. You know, I really appreciate that. That was nice. Uh, or it may be that you think about it and you come and you sit down again and you respond to the person. You say, you know, uh, you and the horse you rode in on, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, you can do whatever you want, right? You can have whatever kind of response you want. I think for me, um, I've just gotten tired over the last couple of months of getting angry all the time. And it seems like the people in the world around me are, are interested in keeping everything stirred up all the time. We, we all know what's going on. We've all got our opinions. We've all made our opinions and minds up a long time ago, I think. Uh, and yet, you know, it, it keeps going. So, so for me, it seems to me that this is the kind of cool technique that you can adapt to other situations besides criticism such as you know, political battling and all the stuff that's, that's going on around us and people shouting at each other and getting angry at each other too, early, too easily. If you get something that triggers you, what you need to do is to be sensitive to, I've been triggered. You need to know what your signal is. <laughs> you know, is it something that you feel? Is it something, you know, so figure out what that is. And then you just have to practice a few times going from that feeling as soon as you begin to feel it. So imagine somebody saying something to you that's likely to trigger you. And as soon as you feel the unwanted feeling, step out, dissociate, think about how you want to respond. Is it even worth it? You know, I mean, sometimes the question is, do I want to come back in and get engaged with this person and debate about something? Or, you know, or do I realize that it isn't going to make any difference? And in fact, it's probably not going to, you know, help our evening go along very smoothly either. And come back in and say, well, you know, uh, I got it. Thanks. You know, <laughs> thank you for sharing. Whatever, whatever it is that, that works for you. But but to just take that one breath, that step out, take a breath, and make a choice consciously, make a choice deliberately about what you're going to do, rather than have your automatic programming take over and uh, you know and create uh, more stress and tension than is necessary. So anyway, there's my little quick tip, trick, uh, technique uh, for, uh, for uh, opening here tonight. And um, there you go. Thank you for sharing it. Well, you're welcome. Uh, so who do we got with us tonight? Oh, I can hardly wait. Sarah Carson. And let me tell you something. You're going to learn a lot from her. I have done this technique with her. It helped me write my book. But if you don't even learn anything, just listening to her talk is worth being here for as long as she will talk in our ears. Oh my gosh, it's just entrancing all by itself. Sorry, I'm fangirling. So maybe you'll want to do a better introduction, Michael. <laughs> well, actually, I think your fangirling is just great because, uh, you know, uh, Sarah is somebody that I have known and, and loved for quite a, a while. And I'm just so happy that you're with us. And I'll just tell you all officially, she is the co-founder of the Intelligent Hypnotist. She is an HNLP trainer and an IAC master trainer, master hypnotist trainer. Uh, and as a consulting hypnotist and trainer, uh, she runs a thriving training center in New York City, right there in the middle of it all. Uh, and she sees private clients for transformational change. She is a published author and she has produced numerous digital training products. So we are just so happy to have you with us. Sarah, you need to uh, unmute your microphone, by the way, uh, and welcome. Thank you so much. What a wonderful introduction. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so, so we're going to let you get underway with the, with the, uh, with the pattern in a minute. But, uh, you know, we always, we always just have a couple little words. And, and uh, like I said, we're, we're so happy to see you. I, I just wonder also if you could just kind of give us a, a report in terms of uh, uh, COVID, working online. What's going on with you with regard to, uh, to all of this? How's, how are things up there? Well, everything completely shut down as much of the country did, but we certainly did in New York City uh, about March 16th, complete closure. Mm -hmm. And to be truthful, we haven't stepped back into our physical bricks and mortar office yet. Just haven't been there. I think legally now we are actually allowed to go, but it's a subway ride away. We're not so keen to get on the subway. And also, you know, with the style of work that we do, we have to be closer to people. And we're, again, not so comfortable. I know some hypnotists out there and change workers are seeing clients in person. And for them, it's working. But we've just made that decision. We're just going to wait for now. Um, so for the first few months, it was very odd. New York City was, well, I've lived here 24 years and I've never known anything like it. It was so strange to see it all completely shut down. 
in our you know residential area where we live in shops were boarded up restaurants were closed there was nobody on the streets it was like a ghost town it was so strange and honestly i was not really in that frame of mind to want to be working you know there was just such a uh, uh, feeling around i think a lot of people uh, had that sense and as you were just saying i was so pleased that i have so many tools and techniques in my own personal toolbox and I'm used to using them for myself to be able to get myself out of that funk that I was in sometimes you know we are human and I think it's an important lesson for us as change workers to be able to recognize and admit and say yes you know sometimes I don't feel so great you know because I know these techniques doesn't mean that my, my life is constantly perfect and I'm skipping through the daisies at every moment there are times when you know we can do our own self-work and I was certainly very grateful in those early months to have some tools and techniques to to personally use for myself so as uh, the months have gone forward um, things are a lot better and a lot happier now in New York City restaurants are open there's more life back in the streets. And we are certainly starting much more to do a lot more trainings. We're just in our, just finished our second weekend of a full NLP, HNLP online practitioner training. Uh, Sean has been, had just finished a hypno tarot class. I know Shelley was in and enjoyed. And Jess has been doing some online training also with the hypno coaching. So we've been keeping ourselves busy and active and learning to present in a very different way online. You know, if you looked around our living room now where I'm sitting at my dining room table, it is like a studio with two computers and lights up here and cameras and it's, <laughs> it's very different. But yeah, we're moving forward, you know, as many of us in the world are doing right now and learning new and different, learning new and different. Yeah, Lovely. that's kind of how we are <laughs> in a tiny nutshell. Right. Well, lovely. And, and, and I've got to tell you, because I've seen you online a number of times uh, and, and it seems to get better all the time. We really are learning what we're doing, aren't we? Yeah. Uh, what, a, what a nice thing. So yeah, um, just, just remember, uh, outside of every silver lining, there's a, a dark cloud. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and so here we are enjoying the silver lining of it, uh, at least now. And, and, and how lovely that we can get together this way. Yeah, so... Yeah. Um, I don't want to hog the whole conversation. I'm ready to hear about the uh, uh, about the pattern. But Karen, Karen, did you have any questions or anything that you wanted to ask for? Uh... I'm anxious to get to the pattern, and if there's time after that, then of course we can ask more questions uh, to show what a fangirl I am. You know, I have all of the Carson Jess Marion books, and this is the one that we're talking about today. So, if you have questions afterwards, you can contact Sarah, of course, but. They've got books and they're available on Amazon. So if you need like a whole detailed look at it after, after the fact, it's available out there for you. So, you know, Sarah, I gotta be honest with you. I did take this course on a whim at a Hypno Thoughts Live one year, I guess, and had this idea in the back of my mind of writing a book. And there it was, you know, you throw something out to the universe and there it was, there was the CIA pattern and it was just perfect for that but you can do this for a whole lot more than just book writing can you not oh absolutely this is about creating your own personal council of advisors for anything anything at all in fact Karen I wrote the book with my own council of advisors, which is perhaps why we energetically connected in through the ether <laughs> for that course, I don't know. But yes, you can have a general life advice council, should you wish. You might have a certain goal in mind that you want to complete and you'd like to uh, engage a council of advisors to help you along the way. Yeah, so absolutely, whatever goal you have in mind, uh, yeah, you can use a council. It's always great to have advice, right? <laughs> the super secret council, thus the name CIA? No, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Our CIA, of course, works in super it secret. It sounds wonderfully exciting, doesn't it? And rather, you know, delicious. <laughs> but actually, it is the Council of Inner Advisors. 
There we go. Now we know. Now you know. The Council of Inner Advisors. Yeah, there we go. All right. And let me take you back to probably around about 2014, sitting at home, probably watching the TV. Sean was next to me on the couch. And all of a sudden, he was reading a book. He leaps up. And he's like, oh my word, what is this? And I'm, what, what's happening? What's going on? He said, this is incredible. And I'm saying, what, what's incredible? I can't believe it, he says. And I'm like, what, please tell me. And he said, this is just amazing. And what Sean was reading was Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich. Anybody heard of that book? Well, read that book. It's a great book. Yeah. And at the very back of this book, now this was published in like the 90, 1937, I think it was, a long time ago. And towards the very back of the book, there was a couple of pages that had made Sean leap to his feet. And in those pages it was where Napoleon Hill was, was describing his cabinet of invisible advisors and he had formed in his mind a group of people some were living some had passed but they were people he admired and they were people that he wanted to tap in to their knowledge to their wisdom to their thought processes to their skills and abilities and Sean just loved this idea. And he said, we can do something with this. This is, this is hypnosis right here. And Napoleon Hill didn't know it in the way that we know it, but he knew there was something incredibly powerful about connecting with these, what he called imaginary, invisible advisors. And in fact, there was a point when he almost didn't put this couple of pages or half a chapter into the book because he was so nervous that people were going to think that he was kind of a little bit doolally and seeing other people. But he was persuaded that it really was a powerful thing to do. Now, I think he had a, a, a cabinet of maybe nine or 10 advisors at first, and that expanded over the years to about 50 people. Now, I think 50 is a little bit unmanageable. I don't want that on my council. So we advise, if you're interested in creating a council, to start off probably with six or seven people in your council. So having had Sean's leap to his feet moment, we said, okay, how can we build this out to be an actual hypnotic pattern or technique or change work protocol that can help us and can help other people? So we put our minds to creating this, this, this book and, and this protocol. And Sean didn't really like the word cabinet, thought it felt like a, a large piece of furniture. So he didn't really want to have it called a cabinet. And he said, how about we just have it as a council, that council of inner advisors. Now, at the time, we were running um, a class that we called the NLP Lab. And this was uh, Sean's, Sean's baby, really. He really liked the idea of having uh, a, a, a class that we held in person in our center in New York City, where he just experimented. He'd come up with an idea, he'd flesh it out a bit, we'd get a group of people together and we'd work through something. It really was an experimentation kind of lab, the NLP lab. And so we put together this protocol and presented it in the NLP lab and people just loved it. They loved it. So we began using it a lot more, fleshing it out, and eventually it did turn into the book that we have. So I know that you're on the edge of your seat. Yes. Okay, Sarah, come on. I, I, what I can't is this? Myself. <laughs> I know you can't contain yourself, can you, Michael? <laughs> well, it's a six step pattern. And as Karen said, it is about creating your own council of inner advisors. I mean, how cool would it be to be able to sit down with Albert Einstein or to have a cup of tea with Elizabeth I or, you know, 
be able to get some of the skills of a grand chess master or some insights from Steve Jobs about creativity and thinking outside the box. It's a really cool idea. I mean, the first step really is to consider, and I'd love you guys to play along tonight because I'm gonna make this kind of interactive and there'll be little hypnotic moments. And so please, please feel free to play along. It, along. And if it's not for you to play along tonight, listen in because you never know how far a change will go. So the very first step is to kind of decide what kind of council you would like, much as Karen was saying. Do you have a particular task or outcome, something you're working towards that you think that would be so cool to have a group of people? Or maybe you're, you'd like to create a, a council that's just a general life advisory council. Or maybe it's a career advice council for you. You can create this council for absolutely anything. So just take a moment and have a little think to yourself. And maybe you want to jot something down or that's up to you. Just have a little think. Is there an aspect or an area of my life where having a little ca a council would, would be super helpful that I'd like to play with? All right. So you can also have numerous councils, but let's just work on one for now. I think that's going to be the, <laughs> the easiest way to do this. The first, the first step is to begin to choose the members who are going to sit on your council, who are going to be your advisors. And there's a couple of ways to do this. And this usually takes quite a bit of time. So I'll spend some time on it. But if you're really keen to do this, spend some time afterwards fleshing it out and building your council, because I don't think we'll have time tonight to, to create people. So one way that I like to choose my council members, and, I, and it's still my, my preferred way, is to think about what is my outcome. For me, when I was writing a book, I wanted to create my council to help and guide and advise me to write this book. Now, I'd written books before, so I kind of knew how to do it. So what I did, I sat down and said, what am I good at? when it comes to writing books. So have a moment and just think, what are you good at in the task that you've already set yourself or in your life? What are you just good at? Those things should just come pretty quickly. Maybe you're organized, maybe you're motivated. Everybody got a few ideas? Great. So you don't really need so many advisors for those aspects, do you? Now is the time to get truthful with yourself and begin to consider what areas am I actually not so strong in? Where could I use some help? What aspects of this task are proving a challenge or have proved a challenge for me in the past? Take a moment and list those in your mind or write those down if you want to, because they're gonna be key. All right, we're going to move on. But you can, again, step back into that moment as you work on this by yourselves. Now, as you look at your list, take one of those aspects that you think might be your, in your top two or three and begin to think about somebody that you know who actually excels in that specific aspect. Now, this can be a friend. This could be a famous person. This could be somebody who is, has passed over or is alive. Be a film star, celebrity, sports personality, politician. It could be 
a comic strip character. It could be a fictional character from Shakespeare or Dickens or whoever. So do that for a couple of people. And then I'm gonna check in with you. All right, everybody got at least a couple of people? Fantastic. I would love to hear who you're thinking of. So please, I don't know if Michael has to open your mics or you can do that or. I think everybody can unmute themselves. Yeah. If they want to yes, they yeah. What kinds of people have you come up with who might be on your council? Mine were very different than the last time I did this because my goal is very different, but it amazes me how before everybody was famous or known, they were authors. Oh mm. no, this is uh, health wise, cooking and, and getting weight and things together. And it's a good friend who plans meals well and different people, but yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Thank you for evoking that. Mm -hmm. Anybody else yeah. like to share? I, I had a strange thing happen, Sarah, that, <laughs> that I hope, hope isn't a, a, a monkey wrench in this, but but I, I noticed that I was thinking about business and about business stuff and particularly about marketing. And, and what I noticed is I thought, who do I know that's really good at marketing? And, and, and as the people came to my mind, it's like, I don't want to do it the way that they do it. I, I, I had resistance to the, to, the, to the ideas that were coming up. Maybe you're going to create an anti. Ah. Yeah. Invisible marketing. Yeah. <laughs> I've it's been doing that. We actually have a little, little section of that in, in the book. Mm -hmm. Hi, Sarah. This is Chris. Hi, Chris. Um, my topic's pretty mundane. It's it, The project is uh, remodeling my home. And um, so I have some skills, but there's a whole bunch of people I need. So, for example, um, on the creative side of advising me, because I, I'm, you know, it's a lot of money when you change your flooring and your paint and all that. Um, I thought about a, my real estate friend for mm -hmm. advice on what's going on in the market. And then I thought about um, a woman I just met through a painting company who's a color specialist. And, I know uh -huh. her name, and she would be great because she has a lot of experience. She's in a lot of houses mm -hmm. and she's very non-judgmental. So she talks to you about personality and all. And I, I was thinking, wow, she'd be perfect. Yeah, you go. Uh, and then I was thinking for the actual materials and the, and the installation, I would know nothing about that. So, I mean, I, I came up with something as generic as the um, flooring department at Home Depot, or, <laughs> you know, somebody in, at Lowe's. And I, I mean, it's just appropriate. I don't know if these are the kinds of ideas. You know, we're, we're going to find out because the next okay. step is to close your eyes and picture one of those people in your mind's eye. Okay. And as though you can turn your microphones off, as though you're having this conversation with them and share with them that you're creating, all of this in your mind's eye, a council of inner advisors. Share with them what your goal is and your outcome is, and why you're creating a council, and share with them why you've selected them to invite them to be on your council. Explain to them maybe the specific aspect or attribute that you're going to be asking them to contribute on. And listen and observe everything. And be ready for them to say yes. And if they say yes, thank them. And they may say no. And then again, thank them for their time.
and then when you're ready, come on back. Did everybody get at least one person who was willing to be on their council? Yeah, perfect, that's great. Now, that was kind of a conscious way to choose the people on your council. And we're really heading into the unconscious way as well. You can just set the intention for people to show up to your council. That's one interesting way to do this. Another way that I really liked was to set the intention before I go to sleep and dream. For my personal council, I wanted six different people and I selected four and I found that they were all men. And I thought I really want to have a little bit more balance on my council, uh, different ages uh, and certainly a few men and a few women. And I knew the different aspects and qualities that I wanted. And one of them was, um, I think it was called just do itness. <laughs> just do itness. I didn't want motivation, didn't work for me, but the word just do itness worked. So I set the intention before I went to bed that women would come to me in my dream and we would potentially have a conversation and I would be able to select them. Well, all night I dreamt. I dreamt of Elizabeth I. And I dreamt of the little girl from Brave, the Disney movie Brave with all the red curly hair. And I dreamt of Temple Grandin and I dreamt of Elizabeth II and I dreamt of Eleanor Roosevelt. And when I woke in the morning, I had far too many people for my council, which was a wonderful thing, right? A quality problem, as we say. So then I used another technique that I'll just explain to you rather than go through, but please, this is a great one as well. And that was a little bit more of the hypnotic interview. Kind of what you just did, um, and what I really liked about that is that when I did that self-hypnosis, I could see where we were sitting. I could see the cup of tea on the side. I, on all of these things, I thought, there's something in this. So I began to write all of these details down. Idiomotor is another way to do it. Find what your yes or your no signal is. Use that. Using a pendulum is another way that I've also selected people for my council. So there's a whole variety of ways to choose people for your council, but that's just step one. We're just beginning. So step two is creating the council chamber. You really want to be able to create somewhere that is unique and special for this, this wonderful meeting of minds for you. So if everybody wants to play, I'm just going to lead you through a nice little mind spa hypnotic moment for you. And it's going to be real quick and easy and lovely. So set the intention that you're going to close your eyes now and take yourself to a really comfortable place for you. Maybe it's a place out in nature or a place that just brings you comfort. It might be a familiar place to you. Maybe it's your go-to comfort place. It may be a place that your unconscious mind has just brought forth for you today. That's okay. That's all wonderful. And as you enjoy stepping into this place of comfort and relaxation, I want you to just begin to look to see what is to your left and what is to your right. And if you turn around, what do you see that was behind you? Mm, that's right. And just allow yourself to begin to explore this place in whatever way really works for you. Feeling the temperature of the air around you. 
noticing what you notice. And at some point, you'll see something, a structure, a house, a clearing, something that you're drawn to in the most wonderful way. Head over to whatever it is for you. This is a place that's going to be so special for you because you're about to create the chamber, the meeting place for your council. If it's a house, to step inside and find the exact right room, place or courtyard, whatever it is. If the place you're drawn to is outside, take a look around at the special markers that are there, highlighting the importance of this place for you. Maybe it's a clearing or a tent or a picnic blanket. That's right. And just begin to explore this place, finding the specific space or room or center where you're going to meet with your council. When you are ready, you can reorient to the here and the now, coming fully back to this place. Welcome back, everyone. So I'd love to hear what kind of meeting spaces have your unconscious minds brought forth for us to enjoy? I, I um, was on the beach and uh, I grew up in Corpus, Texas, Corpus Christi. So I um, found a council meeting under the pier, which um, is kind of a strange volatile place to have a thing, a thing but it seems like the water is very relaxing and okay. uh, it's not mafia at all. <laughs> it's not mafia. It wasn't. I, I don't think my council's up for that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, just hold that in mind. You never know how it might morph and change. Okay. Because things sometimes do. And be cool with that and be cool if it stays exactly the same all the time. Okay. Right. Either way is better. <laughs> Anybody else like to share? Shelly didn't get to last time. Shelly, you want to open your mic this time? And I don't mean to force you. Oh, no, no. It's okay. <laughs> Sure. Yeah. I just, uh, well, walking through a beautiful forest with the river going by and, and spotted a beautiful uh, cottage and a clearing off in the distance to my left, which I, I walked to and it was very cozy and inviting, a little fire going, some stained glass, some wonderful Afghans to curl up in on the couch. I almost forgot to make room for the council. So I had to kind of <laughs> 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 so I, I created some space before I left. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. Great. Anyone else like to share? I had refreshments. Of course you did. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting you know, it. I, I've been watching a lot of period dramas and, and particularly like uh, like Tudor Elizabeth and stuff that you, you keep mentioning Elizabeth the first, which is interesting. <laughs> and so I and so I I found myself in a privy chamber. You know, this is this is my my privy council. Uh, <laughs> and and so there had to be a banquet table over here. So there's wine available and there's uh, you know, and there's food to eat as well. And uh, yeah, wonderful, lovely, absolutely great. Anyone else like to share? Chris, you had your hand up. Did you want to share, or were you waving at Michael? <laughs> okay. Grant, I, I think Grant, did you want to share? Yes, Grant, please. Hello, thank you. Yeah, my one was outside. It was outside in a very warm country. 
um, with beautiful trees on the left hand side, rather like the trees in the background that Gloria has there. Um, and on the right hand side was some low level buildings, some very nice low level buildings um, that were kind of whitewashed. And uh, it was on a very large, um, comfortable wooden table, rather, rather a bit like Michael's banqueting table, yeah. I might say, a little bit like that. And, and the atmosphere was very warm and dry at the sea. And there was a river behind me. Beautiful. Lovely. Thank you. Great. So everybody now has a couple of council members. And I'm sure you're going to work on building that out to have, like I say, maybe six or seven. And you've created or at least started to create the council chamber where you're going to be meeting. Great. So that means we are ready for step number three. And that is introducing your council members to the chamber. And you do this one by one. And when I was doing this, I really started to observe my council members as they came into the chamber, what they were wearing, how they were walking, all these tiny little details. I'd come out of trance and I'd write things down. This I have found is really powerful for a, a self-help personal development tool. And I've also have used it with groups. So when I'm doing it for myself, there's such a lot of fractionation because I'll go in, I'll do a little piece of it. I come out, oh, I must write that down and instantly I look back in. So it's deeper and deeper and it's a wonderful experience. So with this step, you're going to take a moment and go inside and take yourself immediately to your council room. And as you're sitting there or standing there, whichever works for you, invite one of your council members to join you in the room. Maybe you stand and greet them or go to the door to greet them or Expect them to come in while you're sitting, whichever, it, whatever happens works for you. Greet them as you normally would greet anyone and welcome them to the space. Explain that this is where you will meet together for the council. And remind them of the specific task that you've asked them to fulfill for you. Ask them to look around the space and ask them if there are any changes, adjustments, adaptations, anything to alter or add that will make their experience even deeper. And just allow those to occur and happen. And now explain to them that there may be times when the two of you want to meet privately and ask if this council chamber is the right place to meet or whether, or whether there's actually somewhere else that would be better for the two of you to meet. And if there is somewhere else, that's right. Just ask them to take you there now. Notice everything. Chat with your council member. And thank them once again for agreeing to be on your council. Tell them you'll see them soon as you watch them leave. And now take a moment and ask the second person who you've asked to be on your council to come into the council room. Just observe how they come in, what they're wearing, how they're walking, what their attitude is. And thank them for joining you and explain that this is where you're going to meet together with the other council members. Ask
ask them if there are any alterations, additions, changes, adaptations they would like to make to this space, to make it the perfect meeting space for them. And allow those to happen. And now explain that sometimes you may wish to meet privately, just the two of you. And if this council room is the right space for that, or if there's somewhere else that they have in mind. And if there is somewhere else, allow them to share that with you now and take you there. Take a moment to thank them and let them know that you'll be calling your council together sometime soon. Just watch as they leave, as you say goodbye. And now come on back to this room, to the here and now. Fully and completely. <laughs> How was that everyone? Oh, people like that one. <laughs> <laughs> Please share with me. I'd love to hear a little bit. My council is made up of the strangest collection of folks. This is help in getting healthy, right? And my good friend, Catherine, who turned me on to the Google goddess has every recipe. If you've got two things that you want to put together, Google it and she'll help you out. Um, so Catherine's involved. She wants to meet in private at Starbucks. Yep. Not in my conservatory in the center of a beautiful labyrinth. Uh, Grandy Light is it's on my It's how it just instantly happens though, isn't it? If something's yes. just taken there. I think I'd like to meet Starbucks. Boom, you're there. That's right. Grandy <laughs> Light is on my council because she's a tiny little thing and vegan. And she whisked me off to the dunes and said, you have to have more leisure time. You have to get out and you have to walk the dunes and you have to play around. And, and we danced and we did that instantly. Yes. yes. Instantly we were dancing on the dunes. Sarah, that was just beautiful. And yes, the layers of the metaphorical yep. layers of information yep. we got from that, incredible. Yep. Begin to write some of these things down. Yeah, it's really interesting. Yeah. yeah. When I... Um, had my counsel for writing the book. One of the people I'd asked to be in my counsel was in my life. I, I don't like horror fi movies, films, books, anything at all. But, oh no, that's not my thing. However, he just came instantly to my mind as a very prolific writer, someone who'd been a writer all his life. And when I did this part of the of of the of the pattern. He took me to a room, a house that for some reason I thought was probably in the north, northwest. I don't know why I thought that. And we were upstairs in a room that had bookshelves on one side and a, a very old sofa in the middle with a kind of a big comfortable blanket over it. And by the window was a desk with an old fashioned typewriter and a cup of tea and I could see trees outside of the window. And it was so real that when I came out of trance, I got curious. And I Googled, where does Stephen King live? Yeah, Joe, up came a house that I swear was so similar to the house I had in my head and that room. And it was so spooky <laughs> and wonderful. And I can't explain that. I, ha I have to say, as you were describing it, uh, I've, I've been to the house. My daughter went to school with his son and you're absolutely right on. <laughs> you're right on. I could just, as you were talking about it, I could see his house. I can remember being parked on the street in front of the house. Yeah. yeah. You, now, is, uh, you're right there with him. How do we explain this? Is this some kind of universal connection that we have with everybody maybe it might, yeah maybe i can't explain it i don't have an explanation for it is it my that you know over the years of my life flipping through the tv i've seen something about him being interviewed and is i saw it and it stored itself somewhere in my mind maybe 
but get ready for interesting and unusual insights. This is why I say write everything down, write everything down, because you just don't know. We don't know. We, what we do know is that the unconscious mind talks to us in metaphors. We absolutely know that. So everything that we are experiencing is potential metaphor, isn't it? Why was there a cup of tea? I'm not sure. Do I need to know? Probably not. But my unconscious mind knows. And that's good enough for me. <laughs> it's so cool. It's a really interesting experience. Amy, are you still under the pier? Yep. <laughs> yes. Um, so, so my people were Jim Gaffigan. Um, I, so I'm working on writing as well. And I'm, I'm a little, struggling a little bit because I don't have models for the actual part of writing. Uh -huh. I just know the result. And so like Jim Gaffigan, I have, um, um, oh, I just lost her name because I was going to come back and write it down. Um, the poet who is really well known, but she's no longer with us. Um, Maya Angelou? Yes, Maya Angelou. Sorry, I was going to say that backwards. And um, it was interesting because the first person that I met, which all of a sudden I can't remember who that was, um, they did not want to meet with me one-on-one -on -one under the pier. So we went above the pier um, on the top and leaned over and that was kind of a nice place. And, um, and then Jim Gaffigan was totally cool with being under in the shade in the heat of Texas. And he needed to be near where he could see his kids. His kids were kind of like running around. But um, I, this, this place is kind of very interesting because it's like, we're not sitting at a table. We're not having that kind of council. It's almost like the rebel council and we are not going to write things down. So it's interesting that you're encouraging that because like, I can see how that would be beneficial, but like, you know, maybe that's spark sparking a little curiosity. Why is there no writing in this group? <laughs> that's what they're there for. found your writers yet. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe so. Maybe they're just goofing off and yeah. Yeah. And also, like I said, the very first uh, step of, of creating your council, that takes some time. You've got you know, six, seven, seven people to, to want to bring on board with this. And, you know, we only really probably have time. I don't know how many most people got. Probably two, three. Maybe, maybe, maybe three. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So spend a little time in that first step and, and create the council members. And your council members can change, right? You can invite new people. You can, you can have um, separate councils. Maybe you'll have a council of just three of them. Yeah, there's all kinds that you can do. Sometimes you have different people just show up. Martha Stewart keeps showing up. She keeps wanting to intrude and, and micromanage the recipes. And, the <laughs> <laughs> and I've told her that's too hard, but she wants to add elegance, make it all elegant. I mean, you know, be, okay. weird things are showing up. It's that's very, easy. very interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. All right. So the next, the next council meeting will be the very first time that you invite everybody together. So take a moment and close your eyes and take yourself in your mind's eye to your council chamber, to the special place where you meet and invite your council members in. Now, you may find that they're already there. Or they may come in one by one, in pairs. But just begin to notice all the details that you notice about them. Notice where they choose to sit. Do they chat with each other? Or are, they, are they quiet? And when the time is right, you can bring the meeting to order and you can be as formal or as informal as you wish. Because now you're going to ask your council members one by one to introduce themselves to the group, just as you would if you were hosting a a group of people who didn't know each other. 
and explain why they are here and kind of what their brief is, what they've been asked to contribute. So I'll be quiet for a few moments while you just enjoy this moment. Whenever you're ready, you can bring yourself back to the here and the now, to this moment. Anybody like to share how that was? I know when I had my first council meeting, um, I had six members on my council and the last two members to introduce themselves was Eleanor Roosevelt and Albert Einstein. And it was Eleanor's turn to introduce herself going around, kind of just round in the circle. And she was just about to begin and Albert jumps in and said, oh, here we come, here's Bossy Boots. <laughs> so already there was some kind of interaction happening between the council members. I hadn't expected that. And ever since, because I kind of have kept the same council as I've gone on, Albert and Eleanor are best friends. Now, I don't know if they ever met each other in real life, but on my council, they're absolute best friends, constantly teasing each other and having fun time together. <laughs> so anybody want to share a little bit? I felt I was having a, a little bit of, like I was trying not to laugh. It looked insane because, um, Douglas Adams is the first person who who showed up and um, he's, so Jim Gaffigan is kind of like, what I'm writing is for a grant. So it's kind of like dull writing and he's cutting up and trying to take us off topic or whatever. And Douglas Adams has a clever way of documenting things that you would need to in a list form that um, makes it kind of fun. So I thought that was interesting. You know, one of the people that I had on my council is a, a British comedian called Victoria Wood, who I simply adored. And I really wanted to have somebody to bring some levity and a bit of fun. Because I, I was like, when I'm writing a book, I get caught down in, 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 into it all. I, and I, you know, it's hard and I can't do it. And then I get frustrated. And then, you know, so I thought, you know what? having someone who can bring a smile and bring some fun to all of this was so important for me. So having someone who brings fun to some of these things might be good for all of us, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> it's a really nice aspect to have coming in. Anybody else want to share? What time have we got there? Yeah, Janet. Well, my council meeting met at an outdoor bar at a dive hotel in the in the Grand Caymans, and I had um, biz business people. It was a small group, um, but talented business people. I had Snoop Dogg and uh, Jason Lynette, and Jason Lynette was wearing all purple, and Snoop just had to have whatever it was Jason had on. He had to give him his clothes. <laughs> It's too funny. Now, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> we don't need to know because sometimes it might be just fun. It might be our unconscious minds being a little bit playful, but we don't know, right? Yeah. Yeah, Gloria. I have a question. When uh, I found my sacred chamber, <laughs> it happened to be a cave. Mm -hmm. And the cave I saw is one that I bring people to in hypnosis. Oh, okay. 
And the, the, when I do that in hypnosis, the cave has three sections. But I was just in the center section. And the two people I brought were Superman and the fairy godmother. <laughs> yeah, lovely. And that might be funny, but I found that really disturbing. Oh, okay. I, I'm thinking, what is wrong with me? Am I living in a dream world here? That's why I'm not getting to what I really want on a practical level. Well, did you choose those people? Did you select them? I did. For those, okay. So I'm, I'm you, you, you chose them consciously? Mm -hmm. But then I might, the next thing I came to was, do they have to be alive? No. No. Because the, the last person I came to that I thought really had meeting who went from nothing and really became something was Ruth uh, Ginsburg. Uh, yep. And I see her as being a lady to have on your not family. a lawyer, but I, I see her as really a courageous, you know, doer. Yeah. yeah. Kind and bright. So spend some time chatting with her in your mind and ask her if she'd like to join the council, if she'd be prepared to do that. And what the specific role is that you, you would like her to, to bring? What aspect? What I'm doing is I have just come up after 20 some years in Florida. And um, now I have, I have, I don't, well, I have, I have my daughter and I'm in my cousin's farm in her apartment on the farm, but I need to put together my hypnosis practice again. I don't know anybody up here. And it's not exactly going to be easy to go bouncing around and, you know, there was a time that when I was selling insurance, I would do cold calls and I did them up in um, Spanish Harlem in New York City. Mm -hmm. And I would go into different stores and that, you know, and I would look around at things people were selling, you know, and, and I'd tell them how nice this was and this, that and the other. And after we get into conversation, then I told them what I did and I got clients that way. Mm -hmm. But that is a non-existent situation anymore nobody does that anymore they don't even let you go into in the malls you can't do that they're very strict about you know don't solicit in the malls but it's not like i was selling an item i was so maybe you want to consider someone who's a creative online marketer yes but then i have to figure out who that is <laughs> yeah yeah i mean it takes a little work this isn't necessarily always instant yeah but i'm i'm thinking that way that if i'm i'm attempting to get into a condo in New Jersey now, mm -hmm. waiting for the closing. And um, that, I really think that's what I have to do. Go really go online and do it this time. Yeah. yeah. Get, well, that is interesting to learning to get yeah. from that. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. It, it's interesting. Yeah. yeah. A, well, your fairy godmother, wow, what power she has. <laughs> Who knows what she will bring, <laughs> right? <laughs> But we're ready for the next step because the next step is actually using your council and most of the time once you've created your council this is the moment you'll step into right we only really need to create the council and create our meeting space the one time for each council and from here on you'll be able to step in and actually begin to use your council and there are many different ways that you can interact together with your council you can bring a question and just uh, kind of open the floor and you be kind of the, the chairperson asking so-and-so to speak or this person or maybe go around the circle. So you can use your counsel in that way. That's good. We have, I'm just looking at the time. Okay, we have a few moments to have one experience and I'd like to share one of my favorite ways to use the counsel. And that is to give, ask a question in your mind that you will present to the, the council. And what you're asking each one to do is just to give you a one word or phrase and or a, an item, a physical object, okay? So think of a question that you would like to ask your council, even though it's a, maybe a small council and close your eyes and take yourself to your council chamber and invite your council members to join you. When they're all settled, explain. 
that you're going to ask a question and all you would like them to do is to give you a word or a phrase and or a physical object. They don't need to explain the meaning of the object to you. They'll just gift it to you. We'll take a few moments to go around the circle, listening carefully, thanking them for their input, thanking them for the object that they've shared with you. And whenever you are ready, thank your council members for their input this evening. Let them know that you'll be meeting them again soon. And come on back to this room in the here and the now. How was that, everyone? I saw some big smiles, some pops of like, whoa. Oh, Michael, how was that for you? Oh, you're on mute, Michael. <laughs> There we go. Uh, that was fantastic. Uh, you know, I, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm clearly not doing this right, Sarah, uh, and it's fantastic. Good. <laughs> so, so, so my first people were like, uh, there was a, a jester because I had this kind of royal court thing going on at first, yeah. right? Um, and, and I didn't expect him. I didn't really select him directly yeah. so much as it's like, what, what's needed? Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and so there was a gesture, there was this, this guy who's just kind of like a dude in the neighborhood that I don't really know, but it was about direct marketing and the marketing in my local community. You know, and this guy didn't want to meet me anywhere other than in this cute little neighborhood restaurant. So, so the gesture, here's the thing, the gesture gave me a rattle and, mm -hmm. and, and the phrase that he had was make some noise. The, 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 the dude in my neighborhood took me into this little coffee shop and gave me a, a salt shaker and told me I should spice things up just a little bit. And, uh, <laughs> and, and then the, the last guy was the ophthalmologist. I just had the eye surgery last week and the last guy was my ophthalmologist okay. who keeps booking me for like 7.15 a.m. appointments. Yeah. And he just told me to get the hell out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so cool, isn't it? It really is. I, I just adore this pattern. I just love it. Yeah, it's great. That's great fun. Anyone else? Karen, I saw you had a big pop. Gloria's got her hand up. Let Gloria go in the office. Well, I closed my eyes and I, I asked for, you know, Ruth Gator Ginsburg, right? Yeah. And I was in my cave, but all of a sudden, the cave was like kind of fiery looking, a very orangey color. Mm -hmm. And what appeared was probably something like Native American, you know, some sort of made of a medicine man or whatever, kind of that kind of figure. Mm -hmm. And what was floating in the air was a was the old feather pen. Yeah, yeah, like a quill. A quill, yeah. right. And before you called us back before I hit <laughs> what did you ah, <laughs> But you have the quill. You can always go back, remember? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Cool. I had what my grandfather gave me one of those many, many years ago mm. as a gift to go on a, a lady's desk that I had gotten as a gift. And God knows what happened to it, right? But it was a quill pen. But it's come back to you for some reason now. Who knows? Just write that down or hold that in mind. Yeah, yeah. very cool. Yeah. All right. So the very last step is what we call dream incubation. This is a really important step because when we sleep and dream, our minds connect things together, right? We know this is really part of our memory formation and part of our learning. And what I like to do is before I go to bed, especially if I have a question that I'm pondering or considering, I will um, kind of allow myself to go into a light trance, which is a very natural part of falling asleep anyway, but this is a purposeful trance call my counsel to mind and just pose the question and then just allow myself to drift off to sleep. 
and sometimes I will dream. I don't remember my dreams a great deal. I'm one of those people who I know I do dream, but I know that I don't remember dreams very well. So I, for me, it's not as though I'm going to wake up in the morning with this like, wow moment. Although I did for those ladies who were candidates for my council. But uh, know that when you sleep and dream, more things are going on, more connections are being made. And don't be surprised if you do wake up with an answer or you have an aha moment the next day about that question, right? So the, the sleeping and dreaming is an important part of this pattern as well. So those are the six steps that we've gone through this evening. Um, all of them can be fleshed out a little bit more. Certainly there are more fun ways to use your counsel. We've gone through a few of them in the book. Um, there's a couple of fun ones like, um, ah, I'll give you an example. I wanted to choose the color. I know I have it here too, Karen. I wanted to choose the color for our, uh, the, the front cover of the book. We've got a number of books with this kind of compass on the front and each one has a different color. And I didn't know what color this one should be. So I asked each one of my council members what color they thought it should be without telling me at first. And then they just told me the color. Then I asked them all to leave. And I went and sat in their chair where they'd been sitting and took on board the kind of color. It's almost like I could pick the book up from their perspective in that color until I found the one that just felt right for me. And guess what color it was? Blue. <laughs> right, just felt right. So that's how the, even the front cover was designed through the, my council. Yeah. So thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed the CIA pattern. And thank you, Sean, for having that aha moment, leaping up from the couch. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> it, it's some, fast, some fantastic stuff. So, so uh, uh, we need to uh, make sure that uh, people have a way to uh, connect with you if uh, sure. you want to do that. So uh, give us some information about how to get in touch with Sarah Carson. Sure. The very best way is by email, which is theintelligenthypnotist at gmail.com. <laughs> Simple as that. Excellent. So uh, we've got a few minutes left, so uh, we can take some questions. If anybody has uh, questions now, would be the, the perfect time to pop yeah. your microphone open. Else so, often we start <clears throat> with a guest lineage, and we really didn't do that with you. Would you give us that? Because you have gone through a number of areas to get here. So tell us how you got here. My life story, Karen? Is that well, what you, you know, you had to start at the beginning, maybe after you came for, over the, on the boat. After we came over on the boat, well, I was a kindergarten teacher and I taught uh, kindergarten first graders for, for many years, for about 20 years. And um, back in 2006, Sean and I both decided to leave our jobs. We knew nothing about hypnosis, NLP. Well, Sean didn't know about NLP. He'd heard about it through business where he was working in London and had always wanted to study it, but hadn't had the time. And we decided to leave our jobs for two years and just do things that we wanted to do for two years. And I just wanted to, to sing. I was studying opera and classical voice and I thought, wouldn't it be great to do that for a couple of years? And Sean had a long list of things that he wanted to do. Uh, and the first thing on his list was an NLP course. So he did an NLP course. The first thing on my list was to go and study in Italy. I was on a three week summer school program in Italy to, to learn to sing and perform. And Sean joined me at the very last couple of days and we had a performance in the evening in the local church. I was terrified. I had such horrible stage fright. And Sean said to me, would you like me to help you? I've learned some of these things in NLP. And I was like, yeah, do anything, please do something. <laughs> and uh, he actually set the kinesthetic resource anchor for me for confidence. And within, I don't know how long it took, 20 minutes, not even 15 minutes, I was suddenly like, what did you just do? Because I felt different. It was that instant moment. And I performed well that evening. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Came back to New York and said, I want to study NLP too. This stuff is life changing. It, that, it, was, it, it was that in that moment for me. 
So that's when I started studying NLP. And then Sean said, oh, I'm going to go and study hypnosis. And I'm like, wait a minute. NLP is fine. Hypnosis is weird stuff. But Sean doesn't usually listen to me anyway. So he went off and studied <laughs> hypnosis. And he would come back from his classes and tell me about it. And I, I would say, well, isn't that NLP? It's kind of so similar, you know, the unconscious mind. And I was like, oh, it's not quite, so yes, it's wonderfully weird, isn't it? It's wonderfully weird and I love it. <laughs> so I then followed on and went into hypnosis and here we are, fast forward. Yeah. But NLP came first for, for both me. Of yeah, for both of us actually, yeah. NLP and HNLP, Humanistic Neuro Linguistic Psychology. Yeah. How does that differ from NLP? What's the difference? Uh, the big difference I find is that NLP can be a little bit uh, formulaic. It's a list of things and it's a little bit more procedural sometimes, whereas the Humanistic Neuro Linguistic Psychology is a lot more conversational and um, draws a great deal from neuroscience. So those would be the, that would be the kind of, you know, the teeniest of tiniest of nutshells, the, the, the difference between the two. Yeah. Yeah. So well, that's me. It's been fascinating, just fascinating. Does anybody have any questions before we close it out for the night? Uh, Amy. I have a question since I have a couple of writers on here. Um, just knowing that the writing process takes long and this is kind of a lengthy process, like, um, uh, not that I want to shorten it or anything. I'm just curious to know a little bit more about how to, I don't know, how to, um, I, I guess I don't really, I, I guess I'm afraid of the length that it takes. And so, yeah, maybe it's I am a long asking. time, Amy, this evening. It took a lot. This will be the longest time that, oh, okay. that of, of, of it all because you're setting it all up. Yeah. You went from not even knowing anything about a council to creating your council, picking your members for a certain aspect or attribute that they have, to creating the space, to meeting them, to bringing them in one by one, to all of those things, right? Uh -huh. Well, once your council is, is set, maybe you'd want to go back just to the redo a little bit of this, have one more time to add a few more people if you've only got two or three. I would suggest probably about six is nice, but it's your council you choose. But from here on out, once you're set, you just close your eyes and go to your council room and post your question. So it can be as, as quick as that. Do you often, do you also kind of have them with you as you're writing or? I didn't, pers well, I think I kind of always do, but those moments of, of actual interaction, no, no. That would be separate. That would be a particular question. How do I structure this? Should I do this or that? What color should this be? I'm feeling like I'm stuck. Um, oh, yeah. wow. This is a wonderful process. I love it so much. Thank you. You're very welcome. I'm glad you love it so much. I do. I adore it. <laughs> I go back to it time and time again. I like it. Yeah. A lot. yeah. yeah. For all sorts of different things. It works for anything. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I have been enjoying this. How's the butternut squash? It's great. It's fabulous. <laughs> and it, it, it didn't come from Google. It came from inside my head. I've been making it that way for years. My question Part of it goes back to Michael, what you were saying uh, originally about um, one of the oldest tools is to dissociate if you're in an uncomfortable situation. And then Sarah just said something about going into uh, sitting in the chair after the counselors left to, to get a sense of um, what the most appropriate color would be. So I'm wondering if after the council meets and they leave, what would it be like for us to associate, not even after they leave, what would it be like for us to associate into each one of the council members? Yeah, Maybe to get an even like deeper. Good. Well, not, then we're going to have to have Sarah back for deep trans identification. Because that's what you would be doing then. Yeah. <laughs> Next step. And they also have that book too. Did I bring that over here with me? No, I brought all of these just to show you all of the different colors, right? Yeah. <laughs> and big variety of all of them. Absolutely. Though, Catherine, you, can. You, could, you can totally do that. Yeah, it's either you you could do a, a, the, a the kind of the light DTI when you just step in and feel it, or you can choose to do a full full blown lengthy deep trance identification with them, which is a okay. longer, much longer process. But yeah, this is your counsel. Get creative. You know, like I said, we mentioned a few things that how we've used it in our book. But yeah, this is your counsel. Use it however you would like. 
right? Be curious about what might happen, what does happen, what what occurs. Yeah. Sarah had some bickering on her council. Just be curious about what it is <laughs> <laughs> that occurs. <laughs> yep. So I want to give Sarah the big send off and all of that. But before we do, I would like to introduce somebody brand new very quickly to uh, the virtual chapter. Grant Morell joined us tonight. And the reason I want to point out Grant and say hello so that we can see you on the camera. Would you please, Grant? Hi, everybody. Hi, Grant. There we go. There we go. Grant will be our guest here next month on the virtual chapter. And he will be joining us with his um, success as a formula plan. We'll find out all about that. So I wanted to let you know about that. He'll be at the Mid-America too, by the way. So, you know, don't forget Mid America, mid America conference.com. See you this weekend. Well, we are, we are right at the end of our time. And this has been fantastic. I, I've never had the, the hour, the hour and a half go so smoothly. I mean, it was, it was just beautiful, beautiful. So thank you so much, Sarah. You're um, very welcome. But before we, before we give Sarah the send off, I just, I just want to acknowledge Karen for a minute because. So those of you who have been, you know, like hanging out with the chapter and you, you know us and you know a little bit about the things that interest us, Karen interviewed somebody very special just recently. Uh, tell them about it, Karen. I did. I had the opportunity to interview Adam Lambert. And if you know anything at all about me, you know, I'm a major Adam Lambert fan. And my past life was as a radio personality and the person that I did uh, morning radio with for 15 years. Uh, he's still doing a show in suburban Chicago, and he had the opportunity to interview Adam, and he called and said, do you want to do it with me? And of course, <laughs> I want to do it with you. And it sounds wonderful. It sounds like we got together, and we met, and we hugged, and we didn't uh, you know, pay any attention to social distancing, but unfortunately, that's not the way it happened. Adam was in London. I'm in Chicago, and the radio station is in suburban Aurora, so it was all on the phone, but it was still a blast, and thank you, Michael, for letting me gush about it for a second. Hey, put, put Adam on your council. You know, then, then all the, all the, you Adam's know. always with me in one way or another. <laughs> I got right. my, my board certification in hypnosis by writing about being hypnotized by Adam Lambert. So I'm telling you, he's a very important figure to me. Excellent. <laughs> okay, well, this has truly been a special chapter. Uh, and like I said, I've, I've just had a lovely time. I hope the rest of you have as well. Oh, I, our apologies to people who had a little trouble logging on. We will clarify those instructions and see what we can do to make that uh, a little smoother uh, next month. Uh, and uh, so many people watching right now will be seeing this on the replay, which means that they won't get to do what we are about to do, but they will get to witness it. Because what we want to do is we want to send Sarah off in a great cacophony of love. And in order to do that, I'm, we're just going to open up, everybody open up all of your microphones at the same time and wish Sarah a good night before we sign off. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.